Now, if you haven't played the Shred Druid, you are really missing out. A lot of these other builds, you see people, they're hitting for 10 trillion, bagillion, bavillion crits and things like that. The builds work really good, but they require two, three, four, five uniques for them to even function, literally even function. The Shred Druid is not quite like that. On this one in particular, I do have one unique on this build, but that's just because it's so convenient and I've found several of them. You actually don't need any uniques for this build to get up and running and work perfectly fine. Here I am, just a little bit over level 60 in world tier four, slapping down monsters a dozen levels higher than me or more sometimes. So it really does work great. You're flying around, it's really fun. I get asked about the build all the time. So here, let's go ahead, jump in, take a look. What makes this shred build so good? Go ahead and jump into the skill tree. Now, first off on the skill tree, just real quick up at the top here, Storm Strike is pretty much what everyone goes with and come over to Fierce Storm Strike. That way you get a 50% chance to make enemies vulnerable. Down for the main skill we're using all the time, Shred, and then you come over to obviously Primal Shred. Your second and third attacks will dash uh, and Shred's critical strikes chances increase by 30%. That's crazy huge. But dashing around, making the second, third ones, it makes you literally fly across the map all the time. Now other skills we end up using, Cyclone Armor for some survivability, obviously. And enemies that are knocked back also become vulnerable. So there's another way that we make monsters vulnerable on this build. We also are going to use Blood Howl coming down and over to uh, preser preserving Blood Howl. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, Blood Howl increases your attack speed for four seconds. But this one, the cooldown is reduced by one second for every kill. And there's you see there's no limit. So you can almost keep this four seconds up like all the time almost if you were really like trying to spam it if you really want to way more than you generally think now we have no companions but we come down we've got hurricane up just as a another little bit of damage and actually it's another way that we apply vulnerable 15 percent chance to make enemies vulnerable for three seconds and of course it does slow for two seconds as well now down here grizzly rage one we're using all of the time as much as you can now it starts off with a 50 second cooldown i got it down to 40. as your gear gets better and better and better and better you can eventually get this so it's almost perpetually up which is absolutely amazing because as you go down a little bit further as well you are unstoppable all the time while you're in grizzly rage the entire time and also here you gain eight percent base life is fortify per second that you're in grizzly rage so you keep getting more and more and more and more fortify come down here I go with the Lupine Ferocity. Every six skill uh, has a 70% increased critical strike damage. So um, that's pretty darn good. For a while, I was going with this one right here. Um, when you're a werewolf, you gain 25% increased attack speed for 15 seconds, but uh, for two and a half seconds. But I decided to go with uh, this one. I definitely settled on it. And it felt a lot better dealing. At least it's every six getting more damage. Now, just real quick for the passives, um, we kind of get up and over. To wild uh, impulses, core skills, it costs 9% more, but you get 15% increased damage. We did have one into Heart of the Wild. You could put more here if you want to get your spirit a little higher. Uh, and then we got Predatory Instinct, so critical strikes against close enemies. Well, everything's close because you're dashing around shredding them. Also, we got three here into, uh, I don't even, now I never look at these names. So yeah, Digitagrade Gate. I've never seen that. I never even look at the word, I suppose. But you gain 9% movement speed while in werewolf form. Well, you're always in werewolf form pretty much, especially if you get the one unique that I have. It makes you a werewolf all the time. It's awesome later game. And I got lucky to find one. It's not required on this build, but yeah. So that's uh, making you move around even faster. We got the passums over here. Ancestral Fortitude. Increased non-physical resistance. And then you gain 15% damage reduction for 6 seconds. After using a defensive skill, you're using both Cyclone Armor and Blood Howl, and you can rock them like all of the time. Next ones we're coming down to is over here, and it's not one you'd necessarily think, but it actually helps out way more than like you really would think. Uh, Neurotoxin just won over to Toxic Claw, so critical strikes with werewolf skills deal 23% of their base damage as poison damage over four seconds. It actually helps out a lot more than you'd actually think, partially because of one of the aspects that I have on, but plus just to get a little bit more extra damage. So since you are poisoning stuff because Toxic Claw, you could go with Invenom as well. Uh, at this point, I haven't wanted to go ahead and do that, but I will throw that out as just an option. Now over here for a bunch of passives, 
Uh, defensive posture increases the amount of fortitude you gain from all sources by 15%, which makes sense since nature's resolve, you get 15% chance of when you're struck to gain fortify right there. I believe I might have said fortitude. I meant to say fortify. Uh, and then reduce the duration of control impaired effects by 9%. You triple it if you have a bunch of fortify. So these all kind of work together pretty darn good right there. When you jump over, look at the Paragon now. I've only got a couple of boards because remember, this is like a budget, kind of like a mid-level build. So first I came up and put on the Lust for Carnage board right here. And then I came over and put on the Ancestral Guidance board. And I got just a couple more to get down there. And I will let you know for sure, you do have a lot of um, spirit issues. These nodes right here, four to max spirit, one to spirit on kill, four max spirit, four max spirit, one to spirit on kill, eight to max spirit, two spirit on kill. These, this little group right here on this ancestral guidance board, that really makes your build like 50% better just with those nodes. On top of that, with this board, critical strikes gain you two, restore two spirit. So that with all this stuff together, that's why these are the first two boards I went with. Some people I talked to uh, recommended going with this board first to get to these ones. Uh, and there's a lot of other good stuff. More max spirit up over on that one. I think over here you got core skill damage anyways. More core skill damage. So not bad, but I decided to go actually respect and tried with that one first. But then I ended up not being able to get to a lot of these other ones that I wanted to do. Um, such as the uh, feral node right here. You get a bunch of werewolf skill damage. Werewolf, werewolf, werewolf skill damage uh, over here. To this uh, one right here, you get the willpower damage while in werewolf form. So a lot of stuff with that increased damage while in werewolf form. And eventually I'm going to get these werewolf and crit strike ones around here when I have the uh, points to be able to go ahead and do that. Now for the stuff that I have socketed into these glyphs, obviously exploit, you want to get this one on. So you pretty much make everything you touch vulnerable. Every build uses this pretty much from what I understand. Up here, I socketed in the werewolf one. Makes sense. This is a werewolf shred build. So uh, you, that's how you get a ton of werewolf damage. Haven't decided when I eventually get up to over to this one. Uh, I'm going to get some more of this stuff here. Come off another board. Haven't gotten that far yet. But in the link in the description, if you want to look more exactly in what everything I put there on the Paragon board. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and take a look at the gear. The most interesting, right? So first of all, the gear up here. Cooldown reduction super key to get that ultimate down lower and lower and lower. So I have a helmet here. And also, this is just a basic uh, aspect that you can get from your, shoot, what's it called? Codex of Power, there you go, Phil. So I just imprinted it on there. This is one that's used on a ton of builds. So you can put this here, you can put it on the pants if you wanted to. This is just where I ended up putting it. Um, willpower is the main stat. Also, to get more damage. So armor, willpower, all stats, cooldown. A lot of good stuff, it's just sacred. We're looking for upgrades later. On the armor, if you can get this Mad Wolf Glee, I found a few of them now, to be perfectly honest, but it could just be luck. Um, but if you can't get this, which isn't guaranteed, obviously, just kind of the same, any defensive stuff that can really help you out on your armor is what you're looking for. Also, I will mention on the helm, obviously, I'd love to get uh, Tempest Roar. I can't remember anything right now, so yes, Tempest Roar, I would love to get up here. I will mention that, but I have not been able to get that as well. Coming down to the gloves here, we got Critical Strikes with Shred deal 20% of its damage as lightning damage to surrounding enemies. One of the only little tiny bits of AoE that we have on this build, but it is just a little bit. Usually, you're concentrating more on your speed, speed, speed. That's why on these, let's see, Shred skills obviously can help you out, but attack speed on gloves is great. You're also going to want to get things like Critical Strike Chance. I have some gloves down here. Critical Strike Chance, Critical Strike Damage, Lucky Hit Chance, things like that on gloves. Really going to help you out, but I haven't upgraded that quite yet. Um, coming down to the pants here. 14% damage reduction while shape-shifted into werewolf. Well, I'm a werewolf all the time. So it's a permanent 14% damage reduction. And on, on uh, pants, this is another spot where you're going to want to get damage reduction, armor, things along those lines. So that's what I have on it. That's what you want to look for. Taking a look at the boots here. Um, at first, you might not understand the aspect, but remember, when you're using your ultimate, a grizzly rage you're always unstoppable the entire time so while unstoppable and for four seconds after you gain 10 percent movement speed and you can move three freely through enemies so you're really moving around a lot faster it can be up to 25 you're going to want to get a better aspect but this is just straight from the codex once again that's the that's the thing a lot of these are straight from the codex this isn't going to be some build that won't come online until the very end game when you get like seven different perfect uniques you can go straight from here 
and you'll be perfectly good. Now, you generally, um, early on, you actually might want to have a two-handed weapon. It helps out a lot with some of the energy issues because I put this aspect on a two-handed weapon, and then instead of 75% a spirit cost reduction, it's 100%. So you don't use any energy while you're teleporting around. But at this point, I'm able to get more energy back with the nodes. So I put, uh, while dashing, you seek out the poison stuff, and you hit it, and it does 100% of that poison damage, boom, instantly. Then when you do that damage, you can poison them again. Do the damage, poison them again. So you're doing your regular damage, 100% of the poison damage they had, then you can re-poison them, and then hit them for 100% again. So that's why it's uh, really good to get this over here uh, with this particular poison aspect right here. For your weapons, obviously, this is where you're going to want to get a ton of damage things. And I would prefer, like at this point, um, to go with the one-handed weapon and the totem. If you can get that waxing gibbon thing, obviously, absolutely sick. Some people even say to, to go without the waxing gibbon. Some, some people say they absolutely want to go with it. That's kind of up to you right there. Uh, that's later game stuff, though. We already took a quick look at the amulet. Once again, try to get spirit cost reduction um, and try to get cooldown reduction on the amulet. You can get it. I don't have cooldown reduction. I used to, but then this one, this amulet was so much better than the other one I had, even though it had a little cooldown reduction. So I had to swap it out. On the ring here, we've got skills deal 10% increased damage based upon your primary resource. So it's kind of back and forth. As soon as you get your resource generation problems completely figured out, It'll stay at 100% pretty much all the time, and you can get there for sure when you get a little bit better gear. But even with this, this uh, Edge Master's aspect to use on a ton of builds, right? So went ahead and threw it on there. This one is pretty darn crucial as well. Grizzly Rage is increased by four seconds. It can go up to five here, though. Uh, and in addition, Critical Strikes and Grizzly Rage increases your Critical Strike damage by 10% for the entire duration. So pretty nasty one. You want to have that on a ring, and you probably want to have this on a ring as well. Um, and this one you absolutely want to have. So all these aspects you definitely want to get. On the rings, this is pretty much what you're looking for. Vulnerable, lucky hit, critical strike, critical chance. That's for a legend, a regular legendary ring that's like perfect. Later on, I just want to find the same thing with much higher roles in um, Sacred and Ancestral, hopefully. At some point here, I actually have an Ancestral ring that's pretty darn good. Uh, with the critical strike chance, actually more barrier generation. So a lot of things that can help me out. Not absolutely perfect, but it's so much more powerful than the regular legendary. That's what we got there. Totems are actually pretty dang good. And uh, after, that's why I said originally I was using a two-handed, but why I wanted to switch to one-handed so you can hold a totem. It inherently has this one right here, almost 10% cooldown reduction. And then you can get another roll. You see down here, I wish it was higher, but I got another cooldown reduction roll. So right there's 15% cooldown reduction on that ultimate. And eventually... As this gets ancestral, get a better roll higher. That cooldown is going to be so much lower to where you can almost have the Grizzly Rage up all the time. Lucky hit, spirit cost reduction, and actually life on kill pretty nice as well. Alrighty, I'm in world tier 4 with a level 64 druid. Let's run out into a hell tide where everything's going to be approximately 10 levels above me. I guess 9 at this point since I'm level 64. Let's go and see how we, how we uh, go right here. So here's what you want to do. You hit all the stuff, slam on Grizzly Rage. And then you just teleport around. And you see, I am kidding quite a bit, but you see, I can go ahead and slam uh, Blood Howl nearly instantly. I can go ahead and slam it again. And you can just use it over and over again because you're killing stuff so fast. And that whole group's down. I mean, it, maybe it's not as fast as a level 100, you know, whatever. But look how quick this really does work, though. For just being level 64, 10 levels under everything that I'm fighting right here. Now you can see it's gone. And if you hit those real quick... The Cyclone Armor and the Hurricane. The cooldowns will run out about the exact same time as Grizzly Rage. We'll go ahead. Just maybe another pack or two here. I actually uh, spammed the skill when I wasn't paying attention. Here we go. Pop on Grizzly Rage. Slap, slap, slap. Use Howl. Slap, slap, slap. And you can just keep going on and on and on. You see, every time I kill something, boom, I can Howl again. And then I got that increased attack speed I get from using Howl. Not to mention, you get the life. You see my life is actually going down, down, down from the archers, which are super annoying, but you actually heal back a ton of life. But as you can see, it, it works pretty darn good, considering especially that you are hitting monsters that are like 10 levels above you. You see, these guys are actually 75 right here for whatever reason. They're actually 11 levels higher than me now. So I would say for the level difference, this build really does work pretty 
dang good in my opinion let me know if you end up using it down in the comments fellas make sure you get out there smack down those demons and keep slaying Ooh.